We'll repeat the procedure just so you get it. I hold it this way, or this way, or sometimes like this with both hands. But to put the uh, neck strap on, what I usually do is hold the bell this way. If you're not a big person, it's good sometimes to do this sitting down and lay it on your lap when you first take it out of the case. Put the neck strap on and then proceed to move. Just make sure the neck strap is on and secure before you're ready to let the saxophone go or don't hold it all that close. My next step, if you remember, is to unscrew this. Take the little cap off, a protector, put it there. I take the neck piece and gently I will turn it this way. Going down, it shouldn't take any effort at all. I tighten that. Now my mouthpiece and reed are already set to go, so I will take it and cup it in my hand this way, and I will, using this pressure point again, turn the mouthpiece and put it in place. The reed is going to touch your bottom lip, so please try to make sure that the mouthpiece is straight and that it lines up with your bottom lip so that it's not sideways. You should adjust the mouthpiece to your face and your, your neck. You don't have to move your face and do funny things that way. Hi, so that's what it sounds like. First I want to talk about how to hold it and how to hold your hands and your regular posture when you play. And I'm going to do that sitting down because most of the time when you practice, you're going to be sitting down. Always be careful when you sit that you don't bang the bottom of the saxophone against the chair. That's the first thing. Some people sit very quickly and they'll have it in their mouth and really hurt themselves. Always hold it this way. When we're not playing, the best, the natural position for the saxophone is to rest it on this leg this way with the bell. What you tend to do is sit towards the front of the chair. So you're sitting on the edge. Never cross your legs, never slouch, never sit against the back. And th This is serious work. It's very physical work. So we want to get off to a good start. I want to talk about my hands first and foremost. And I want you to do something. I want you to take your wrists and just put them out flat, sort of parallel, the palms facing down towards the ground, and move your fingers this way. You will find that if your fingers, if your hands are, if your wrists are in this position, it should be fairly easy to do that. Now I want you to take your wrists and move them up this way so your palms are facing out and try to move your fingers becomes a lot more difficult. As a matter of fact, if you do it in one motion, move your fingers and then do this, you will find it very difficult. Therefore, when you play the saxophone, do not invert your wrist in this way, in either hand. It will make it very hard to play. What you should have is kind of a bend in your wrist this way. The hand is almost at a slight angle. Both hands are that way. And your wrist should be very loose. There's no tension, no tension up here in your shoulders. Let the saxophone rest on your back. Keep your back straight so that it's holding all the weight of the saxophone. And again, so now you will see that my hand position, this, this hand is doing this. The thumb rests right on the saxophone this way. Don't rest the thumb in this way. It's too far in. You have to do this with your fingers. It's all the wrong position. What you will do is rest it on this part of your thumb right here. So that's the right hand, and your fingers are right over those keys. There are three buttons here, one, two, and three. Those three fingers. This pinky will control these two keys right here. This is the low E flat and the low C key. Okay. The left hand, same thing. Your thumb, we're going to talk about the left thumb because that's a very important part of playing the saxophone. Not only does it help be a pressure point, but it's how we play octaves. So it needs to be able to move. This hand, again, should be in this position, very relaxed. I'm holding most of the weight of the saxophone with my neck strap and my thumb. The left, your left thumb should be at this angle on the saxophone, sort of pointing, I guess you would call that a 45 degree angle. And what we do is, what I do is this with my thumb. It's this motion. So this top part of your thumb needs to be able to move. I will rest the fatty part of my thumb on this little black thumb rest and I will let the top part of my thumb be the one that pushes the octave key down. So if I do it correctly for you, 
it should look like this. You don't have to do this with your thumb. Do not move your thumb off the thumb rest up and down. That will cause all kinds of problems in your playing. We won't get very far. So you need to learn this motion. It's awkward at first, but once you get it, take about a day or so and it'll be as natural as walking or breathing. So I have my hands in the correct position. I'm letting the saxophone rest on my neck. The neck is holding most of the weight and the right thumb. And I'm this way. My fingers, as you can see, are kind of almost angling down. I have very big hands. I don't know. In your case, the angle might not be as large, but it's the same. When we move our fingers, we try not to move them completely off and completely back on. All we really want to do is push the button down and let it come back up and not even have our fingers leave those pearls. So in some cases, it's almost impossible to do. But that is the basic position. Your neck strap, you will notice that it has an adjustment bar right here. You can make it longer or shorter depending upon your size and your position. Usually if I'm sitting down, the neck strap is a little different length than when I am standing up. So that is the position for sitting down. I will be on the edge of my chair, both feet flat on the ground, resting on my the weight of it on my neck, the thumb this way. Make sure that my wrists are bent in the correct position and that my left thumb is able to move that octave key. The mouthpiece, when you pull it towards you, should be right in line with your mouth. You should not have to do this or this. If you're having to move your neck, you know that the neck, that your neck strap is in the wrong position. It's either too long. If it's too long, it will look like this, and then you'll never really get there. And if it's too high, you'll be playing it with your forehead. Neither of those is correct. So for me, the correct position is about here. You will notice that my back is supporting all the weight. That's why my feet are planted. Okay. I'm going to show you about standing up. When you stand up, I usually, if, if you need help, if you have to stand up and use one hand, I will hold the saxophone this way so that it's not moving around and just pull yourself up. The positions are exactly the same. Please be very careful with your shoulders and don't do this. I know that a lot of people think that when a guy lifts his, when a saxophone player lifts their left shoulder real high, that that means that they're jamming out. All that means is that they're doing something wrong. Keep your shoulders level. Keep your back straight. This is a physical thing. This isn't just get up and blow. And your hand position is this way. The mouthpiece should be ready to go right in your mouth. The most important thing about these instruments is air. They're called wind instruments. Without wind, they will make no sound. Therefore, breathing is the most important thing and the one thing that most people do incorrectly. Sometimes teachers don't bother, sometimes we get lazy. I have to reiterate, playing the saxophone is physical. This is physical exercise. We're not running, we're not doing a Stairmaster, but I assure you that if you come to one of my concerts and you see me, I sweat just as hard as if I had run a marathon. It is very physical and we want to do things right. For the saxophone to make a tone, air has to go through it. It doesn't have to go in the mouthpiece, it has to go through the instrument. So what I try to do is to pick a point in space somewhere out there and focus my airstream all the way through and hit that point. In order for me to put air through the instrument, I have to take air in. And you've always heard about the famous opera singers and their breathing and athletes breathing. And Imagine running 50 yards and what you feel like when you're breathing, that how much air you're getting in your body. That's what we're going to do now. What we're going to do is we're going to breathe down to our stomach. In my case, I have a big stomach, so I get a lot of air. Right? We don't breathe up here in our chest. We try to fill our lungs all the way down. So I will take a deep breath through my mouth and try to fill up all the way to my stomach. I will feel my back getting larger. I'll demonstrate. And I'll hold it for a second. And now I'll let it go. I'll do that again. You will not only see my stomach getting larger, much to my dismay, but my back will also, you will see it expand with air. I'll turn sideways so that you can see that a little better. Here I am with no air. Now I'm taking a long time to take that air in. Most of the time when we're playing music, we don't have as long a space to do that. So we have to learn how to breathe quickly. But for right now, what I want you to do is just take a few deep breaths with me 
And I want you to really concentrate about getting the air all the way down, all the way in, into your lungs, and then keep going so that it fills this whole area, the back and the stomach. Don't hurt yourself. Don't do anything funny. Don't strain. Just try to get in as much air as you can in your body and let it go. So the count of one, one. Let's practice breathing sitting down. You will notice that it's a little more difficult. It's easier to get a big breath of air when you're standing up. So make sure your back is nice and straight, and let's just take a couple of deep breaths. Fill up our tummies, our back, our lungs, this whole area, the whole chest cavity. All right? Hold it, and let it go. If you don't have enough air going through the saxophone, our sound won't be very nice. It won't be rich and full and, and with a singing quality. It'll be very shallow and nasal and not very attractive. I think I'll show you how that works. Here's with very little air. <laughs> Now here's some air. 